Hello and welcome back to another episode of the First Brick Property Podcast. I am super excited for today's episode. Uh, this episode has been in the making for God knows how long, maybe a year, for a, for a little while, um, mainly because my guest is too busy for me and doesn't have time to to come on. But he's uh, he's been generous enough today to, to give me a bit of his time. Um, my guest today, he is the best in his industry he's uh you know he's a personal friend um i met him through through his through his job and you know he takes care of uh, my assets up to where he is and um really anyone that we purchase property for in that area he's the first person i call to 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 take care of the entire process um from from after we finish the purchase he lives in the sunny queensland sunny brisbane uh, but sunny at the moment i don't think it was last week um this is Jared from Efficient Property Solutions. Jared, how are you? Mate, doing very well and thank you for the introduction. I just got to make it clear, first of all, I wasn't too busy. Every time I wanted to do it, you were always buying property for someone and didn't have the time for me. So uh, a bloke can only nag so much, can't nag anymore. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, I'll say that's half true. You know, no, we, true. We've been both busy. <laughs> no, look, I'm glad we made it, my friend. It has been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know there was, you know there was times where I decided where I was thinking, you know what, like, this guy's too too busy. I'm just going to get another property manager uh, on the pro on the podcast. But then I thought the listeners deserve the best, and you are the <laughs> best. So we've held out, and we finally got you on. So I'm super excited. So I've I've kind of already alluded to you being a property manager. So can you just quickly introduce yourself? What do you do? Sure, mate. Look, my name's Jared and I'm from Efficient Property Solutions. Um, it is a, a family-run organization. It's my business partner, Ryan, as the other director, uh, who is one of our senior property managers as well. We've got Jody, who's our other senior property manager, and then we've got two PM assistants. We've got Prue and Cameron. Uh, Prue does mainly routines and ensures that all the properties are looked after to a very high standard. And Cam assists Jody and Ryan with the day-to-day -day runnings of every single property. So um, effectively, that's that's us as a team. That's us as an office. Um, I guess a bit of a, a background as I guess to who we really are and and how we started. Been in the property game now for about oh, close to eight years. I'm 32 now. I bought my first property when I was 23 or 22. I still have that property to date. It was a dual occupancy up in Marsden, and. Um, kind of branched into advisory and and I guess what you were doing or are doing now KM but for us we were working with a couple of external property management companies and I think like you mate being family run I think you do put a lot of effort into your clients I speak with them the ones that we manage and and yeah they all come back and rave about what you do for them the same applies to us and unfortunately the service that we were obviously receiving wasn't reciprocal for the effort that we were putting into our clients. So it started to hurt a tiny bit. So um, in 2018, it was, I said to Ryan, or Ryan said to me, I think we should kind of stop doing that and really focus on management. Uh, I've got my own property, so I understand really how a property should be managed. Um, so yeah, man, we just did away with the buyer's agency stuff, left it to the professionals like yourself, and really focused down on management, mate. And I think yeah. for, for what we've created, in our niche, hopefully we're adding value to the marketplace and to our landlords and the sort of tenants as well, because without them, um, the whole circle doesn't work really. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. And you know, one of the things that uh, I loved most about you and your business was you only did property management. Um, yeah. There was no other side, uh, you know, sources of income. And, and you know, for, from my point of view as, as a landlord uh, or as an investor, knowing that my property manager only does property management, it means you're yeah. an expert. You, this is what you do day in, day out. Similarly, you know, we don't do mortgage broker, brokering. We don't, we don't get finance. We don't do the management. We only do the buyer's agency. Um, and yeah. we hope that people will see that we, we, we're dedicating 24 hours a day in our yeah. entire time on, onto that one aspect. Is it, was that kind of the thought process behind why you only right. do that side? 110%. So from a, when I say a young age, my mom being a sort of mass lecturer, she always taught me, Jared, you become a jack of all trades and a master at none. I think that's a philosophy that I've always kind of held within me where I'd rather focus on one thing until I become very successful in that field. And then if I choose to branch out after that, so be it. 
but I've got to be honest, mate, we're having a lot of fun just doing management. And I think that's what a lot of clients look for, that you are solely management. Your attention isn't diverted into other things. Um, I've seen and I've experienced in some of other agencies where there is the sales arm and there is the management arm. There's a lot of discrepancy. There's a lot of arguments, a lot of fighting and that sort of stuff. And I think for a property management company where, and I'm sure for any other property manager that listens to this, they will agree. Um, it can be a pretty stressful industry, mate. You are dealing with landlords, tenants, expectations, and, and they all need to be met. So it's like you have enough stress from the job itself. I don't think having internal uh, problems or internal complications make it any better. And that's why we really just decided to focus on, I actually like to do the property management side of things and really not do sales or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a testament and, and the results can be seen through the customer satisfaction. Uh, you know, the customers that we refer to you, uh, and me being a customer personally as well, you know, I've never ever had an issue and uh, and none of my customers have ever come back and said anything bad um, or negative. It's all always positive and, and great news. And um, whenever we're looking for property managers, whatever state, obviously you can't, you can't manage all of them just yet because uh, you're only in the one spot, but um, we've got to find other property managers in other areas. But we, we're always looking for people that are just doing property management. We try and avoid the... Um, the cross contamination, I guess. Yeah, okay, you kind of say that, and how can I say? I think that's what a lot of clients look for as well. Um, from from my background and my experience, even buying my own personal properties, a lot of people deem property investing as a sort of business or a hobby that's too complicated. It's too scary. Uh, they don't want to do it, and I think it can be made quite simply in the sense that. There has to be trust. There has to be open sort of communication between all parties. When when that happens, it makes the journey a lot easier. And I think people then start to relax and actually enjoy the process of buying property because, mate, it can make you a lot of money, but equally it can actually cost you a lot of money if not done correctly. And I think that's where the services like yourself come in, where you have become a master in your field. You have studied everything when it comes to the market, macro, micro, what pushes markets, what drops markets, infrastructure. And I think the two do work hand in hand. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the, the idea behind this episode, I guess, was, you know, because obviously the whole podcast is about educating people about all aspects of the property industry and, and the purchasing process. And yeah. um, property management, I guess, comes at the end of your purchasing cycle you know once you purchase the property one not you obviously go find your property manager and then they take over and you guys will will you know you come at the end when you're there for life pretty much yeah, of course but a lot of people don't know uh how to find a good property manager what to ask them and, and you know what even a property manager does so i guess the, the idea behind today's episode was to answer those questions to give people the idea so before we start real basic can you explain what does a property manager actually do actually do mate and that's and i guess that's the thing i think i want to say the misconception mate like and this is throughout the industry um we don't just collect rent to be honest with yourself um especially now with covid or covid hopefully coming to an end i don't have a social work or a counseling degree but i can tell you what mate i learned things about my own inner emotions and other people's emotions and circumstances where you do become an all-rounder when it comes to that sort of stuff especially when there's crisis especially when there's hardship and that sort of stuff it's not just oh you pay rent into my trust account i disperse it to my landlord but effectively the role of a property manager mate is is to really make the journey of the landlord a peaceful one kind of detailing from maintenance, adding value to the property, suggesting ideas where rents can be increased to, to, to give him a better yield. Um, honest feedback when it does come to maintenance. Some landlords don't want to hear maintenance because that costs them money. But I've got to be honest with you, mate, commercially, my rent roll is worth something. If my property start to decrease in value, I'm pretty much working for nothing really. So it's important for me to make sure that my landlord's properties are maintained, even if it's something the landlord doesn't want to hear. I still have to be truthful with them and tell them, hey, mate, we've done a routine inspection or the tenants have reported this. It really needs to be done because I'm trying to protect your asset long term. 
it's not just about the 300 bucks that you have to spend now it's about the the 20 grand that you can lose if you don't spend it you know what i mean yeah he took sure. over recently two properties i won't mention names where they came from where i got to be honest with you km it's actually happening, mate to be honest with you where these two properties i've just got quotes for both of them there's almost 80 grand worth of damage and work that need to be done between the both of them just to get them up to a standard that someone can actually live in them and both of them were, were on the market vacant and it's like i scratch my head and i'm like well no wonder they vacant what are you trying to show off like what are you trying to promote yeah. so i called the landlord and i told him straight up because we had actually never seen them before because the owner sorry the previous property managing agent wasn't allowing access until a handover occurred to us where I called him straight away and I said, Mr. Landlord, either we spend this or unfortunately I can't work with you because I need to be proud of the properties that I bring to market as well. I need to make sure that my tenants are happy living where they are. So, yep. mate, it is an all rounder job. It's uh, from maintenance to, to tenant selection, ensuring everything runs smoothly. So your job, mate, really... It's almost like I'm a GP. I love talking to my landlords, but every time I call them, they kind of always start the question is, well, <laughs> what's, what's wrong now? And I gotta be honest, mate, for most of the time, it's just me calling them to say hello, which I'm very proud of. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Those two properties, um, they weren't ones that we purchased, were they? <laughs> I wanna say yes, I don't wanna say no. We'll just go to the next question. <laughs> sure. No, mate, it definitely weren't your properties. To be honest with you, the, what I like about yourself, mate, and the way you operate is, you actually get me to go to the properties before you even purchase them, which is awesome because I'll always tell you the raw feedback, whether yeah. or not it's it's what you or the client want to hear. It's I'm telling you what I see and it's testament to your homes. None of them have taken more than a week and a half to find someone. Um, I guess the one in council court, we had lockdown last week, which always makes it a bit challenging. You know what I mean? So I think that's been live now for about a week and a half. I won't tell a lie. But yeah, it's important for us to to look at the properties beforehand because at least that way we can tell the people that are working directly with the clients our thoughts. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, they definitely weren't yours and <laughs> probably definitely one of the two worst properties I've ever seen. And it's, yeah. yeah. It's good to hear that it wasn't ours. Not good to hear that, you know, someone's unfortunately copped the... Uh, Copped a big bill on their hands. They should probably listen to this podcast. Uh, you, know what, my... you know, it's very true. And sorry to cut you off, but what also intrigued me is, and no disrespect to the landlord, he wasn't even aware that his properties were at the standard. Like they, he wasn't even aware that they were like this. So then my brain starts to tick. I'm like, what about your routine inspections? Like, did they do routines? Did they did they report maintenance to mm. you or anything like that? Like to have or to have properties get to this sort of point that's pretty severe yeah yeah and and you know all property managers are definitely not the same um you know we work with a lot of property managers across the country and, yeah, and like i said you know they're they're all different and, and yeah. genuinely i believe you're you are the best that we've no, ever spoken right. to or worked with no, um, when i first personally when i first purchased my first investment property yeah you, yeah, you might not be happy with this. Um, I said to myself, I'm going to save myself the property management fees yeah. and I'm going to do it myself. Now, my first property was not in my home state. Yes. yes. And the amount of problems and, and troubles that I had to go through to, to manage that property, it was, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, tenants coming in and out, uh, yes. tenants having issues, uh, things breaking, lights, washing machines, water, whatever you can think of was just going wrong. And my phone was just not stop ringing. And I'm trying to run the business and trying to do a million other things at once. And um, and the biggest mistake I ever made was not using a property manager. And as soon as I switched over to a property manager, everything became super easy, super, you know, streamlined. Yeah. I, I know the answer to your question. Try me. But maybe you can elaborate. Yeah. You know, should every landlord or every investor use a property manager and, and why? Right. Let me, let me kind of answer this in two ways. Uh, I obviously would love to say yes, but the answer is as equally no. It's should every person buying a property use a buyer's agency? 
Um, when you're sick, should you go to the doctor? It's, it's the obvious answer should be yes, but some people choose to ignore that and then go down their own road. The, the collection of rent, mate, is, is the easy part. And I think that's where a lot of people that self-manage their own property, especially like if you are in the same state as your property, it can be made a tiny bit easier. But a lot of our landlords either live overseas or, in, or, are, or are in interstate, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth even. So for those, it's not just about collecting that money and getting that transferred into your account and texting the sort of tenant when rent's late or if it's late. I'm sure like yourself, mate, it is a job where your phone has always got to be turned on. I've had tenants call me at 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock at night. In the morning, mate, whenever, when an issue arises and you have to be there because the reason why we've adopted that attitude is it's not my money, it's not my property. If a hot water system breaks at two o'clock in the morning and I miss it and that starts to flood the house that causes damage, yes, I could be sleeping and theoretically I time off, I'm sleeping. But then I have my landlord to answer to the next day as to why I wasn't fast acting to stop the problem. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of landlords do not want to be called. A lot of people that want to self-manage don't want to be called at two o'clock in the morning saying my hot water system's broken. You know what I mean? Uh, an example last night, and I guess it wasn't as severe as like a hot water system going or something like that, was the power kept on tripping. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just very lucky that I got mates in the trade that will go out at that time complimentary just to have a look. And um, yeah, with troubleshooting the tenants over the phone, they were able to determine that it was just the fridge that was not really working. So it was tripping power. But for a landlord that's at home with his family, that sort of time, being harassed and being troubled by those sort of questions may not be something that they want. If it's something that they do, fantastic. But for the ones that have self-managed that I have spoken to because I've tried to, I'll call it, win them into my organization. Four or five months later, mate, they come back because it just becomes too hard. So the 25 bucks or the 30 bucks that they pay me, depending on the value of the property, is worth it in the long run. And also not to mention it's all tax deductible anyway. Yeah, 100%. It was, um, it was definitely an eye-opener. Um, I am a, I am actually glad that I didn't use a proper manager straight away so I could see the full extent of of the profession and you know it's not just like you said it's not just rent collecting and um, that's not very hard to do it's it's everything else that comes with it um, you know Evan actually you know I say it's not very hard to do but when the rent doesn't come in on time that's a, that's another process Evan when you're managing it yourself and you don't know the legalities and and how to actually get okay. it it actually does become quite difficult so I am 110% and that's another thing. Not a lot of landlords know the legislation that comes with trying to manage your own property. Whereas conversely, with respect to tenants, they very astute with legislation. Yeah. And I have seen some tenants take advantage of landlords because of that. I'm not going to say whether it's right or wrong. I'll let people make their own judgment. But yeah, you need to be <laughs> With, with what legislation is changing and happening so you can best protect your own property. So, yeah, um, I genuinely feel for, for whatever value we, we make on the property, in my opinion, um, I'd be lost without my property managers. Yeah. Uh, Ryan. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You don't Ryan. manage your own one. You get Ryan to do it. I get Ryan to do it, yeah. Yeah, you don't want that headache. <laughs> no, I don't want that headache, mate. <laughs> That's it. Um, you know, it's important as well, the legislation. You know, Victoria, uh, New South Wales have recently Correct. Uh, changes in their legislation yeah. regarding tenancy. And and it is so one-sided towards the tenant that my tenants almost pretty much own my property. 100%. Um, that if I'm not 100% aware and, and around the the rules and and the and the legalities around it it, it can become very uh, stressful if there is you know conflict or, or you know uh, issues to to resolve. It's funny we were chatting about it today in in the office because I got messaged yesterday by three landlords. There was a post on Facebook something about thirty percent of property managers have left the industry because of like stress due to COVID and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, they just messaged me to really ask me, am I okay? And, yeah. Um, I know this is going to sound a bit. I want to say like harsh and I'm very grateful like COVID for us may touch wood a million times. We've got the most incredible tenants, most incredible landlords, 
out of a portfolio of about 420 properties, we only had to reduce the rental income for two people. Um, so I'm very grateful that everyone played their part in that to make, I guess, our our journey a lot smoother and a lot more stress-free than what it could have become. But um, yeah, we were just talking today because of that, that Jody was like, if some of that legislation comes to, to Queensland, she reckons that a lot more people are going to leave the industry because it is very one-sided. And I'm not, once again, going to say if it's wrong or if it's right, because yeah, I think then on the other foot, landlords want tenants to pay rent on time, maintain the gardens, all this sort of stuff. But then if a tenant wants to put up a picture frame of their family, they give every bit of resistance to it. But it's like you want them to do everything, but then they're trying to make it their home because it is their home. You know what I mean? It becomes their home and they're proud of yeah. where they live. I think as landlords, we provide a valuable service to the economy and providing housing for people that can't maybe afford their own home. So it's like you want them to do all those things, but then you won't let them actually make it theirs. And I'm not saying allow them to to paint the wall purple or pink or whatever it may be, but I've seen some landlords go the whole 10 yards and really kind of make the tenant feel like a prisoner in that, yeah. home, which doesn't sit well with me. To be yeah, fair for sure. Uh, and I agree with that, you know, um, regarding the legislation issues, uh, at first, like, Representing First Brick, I, I I think it's in Victoria and New South Wales they've gone too far uh, because yeah, yeah. the rules are not they're not I guess they haven't been defined you know regarding no. um, tenants being able to make minor changes. What is a minor change? Can they put up a wall? Can they take, remove a wall? You know it hasn't been defined. But I also agree that it is their home and and the land the role of the landlord is to provide housing, like you said. So you know if my tenants, uh, you know how I work, you know my, I'm pretty chill with my tenants, you know, if they want to put up a picture or whatever, who cares, right? Um, they, it's going to make them happy. It's going to make them stay. And the biggest thing with an, from an investor is you don't want vacancies. Um, no. But it's that, it's that middle ground. And, you know, I actually have a question that just came up in, in my head when you were talking. How do you manage the – because you're representing both sides, the tenant yeah. and and the landlord. How do you find managing the, the dynamics, I guess, or, or the wants and needs of both sides and, and sometimes exactly. – those wants and needs can be totally opposite? Mate, that's a very good question. And it's one that is always a tricky one. Um, for example, I've got to be honest with you, what I've started saying to tenants that call with, with silly maintenance items, even items that are big, but they're calling at unreasonable hours where it's not deemed as an emergency. My response is, all right, if you were the landlord, what would you do? Like, what would you do if I was not here and this property was not being managed? Because it gets them thinking as to, okay, let me actually try be resourceful to, to fix this issue rather than just pick up the phone and call. Now, I'm not saying we don't appreciate those calls and we don't want those calls, but some of the answers are literally right there if they just gave the time and day to think about the question that they were asking. But in terms of understanding and in terms of really helping both parties, it's it's purely mate, what we try to do is just really put ourselves in the sort of tenant shoes, understand where they're coming from, and then understand where the landlord's coming from. But the thing that we obviously try and press upon the landlord is the vacancy rate, is the changeover of tenants in their property. I find that properties that change over tenants a lot, it's not lose value, but I feel that the tenants that actually stay in a property for a long term. So for example, I recently moved to this home last year, May. My property that I that I was in before, I was there for five years. So I actually made that property my home. I had, I think, one routine inspection a year because after having routines for three years, the property managers start to understand exactly who you are as a person. I started to do my own maintenance because I knew what I was doing. I couldn't be bothered arguing for sixty dollars what was right, what was wrong. So I just fixed the small things. So I think it's really just about explaining to the landlord, okay, the tenant can leave, but if this is a maintenance issue that isn't fixed, the same tenant's going to have the same issue moving in. You know what I mean? So if it's something that needs to be fixed to make sure a tenant's happy and wants to stay there, fix it. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. But then conversely, on the other foot. Tenants sometimes do need to be educated as to what is maintenance, what isn't maintenance, what is right, what is wrong. And and you mentioned something about legislation not being clear. 
I think property investing as a whole would be a lot easier if legislation became black and white. Because right now in Queensland, some points are clear, but some points are very black and white. So, for example, when it comes to shelving and, and putting stuff up, the property is to be returned in the manner that the property was handed to them in. Now, I mean, that means painting the walls pink while you're in there, but then when you leave, the walls were white, painting them back white. That is effectively handing back the property to me in the manner that I handed it to you in. Yeah. Yeah. Pest control. It's another, it's another thing. Tenants think that it's the landlord's responsibility. Landlords think that it's a tenant's responsibility. If there was just legislation that said pest treatment is a tenant's responsibility or a landlord's responsibility, man, it would just make life so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, the decision makers, I guess, at the end, the legislation is always linked with politics and uh, there's always going to be a bit of grey area because no one wants to lose voters or whatever no, it is. So it's a... like, mate, one, one that we see all too often is bond cleans. Like, we'll take over properties where the tenants will say, no, nah, the bond clean wasn't done when they moved in, but then obviously when they move out and I'm trying to re-rent it, I'm trying to get them to do a clean, but I can see in the entry condition report that they have literally written next to every single item that the property manager has handed to them, dirty, dirty, dirty with pictures. So it's not even the tenants trying to lie or fabricate things. How can I then expect them to go spend 900 bucks on a clean when the property wasn't handed to them in that sort of manner? Yeah. When I've got a tenant moving in, I'm not saying to the owner, all right, Mr. Owner or Mr. Owner or Mrs. Owner, uh, unfortunately, managing agent didn't really get the property clean previously, whether it be from a vacating tenant or come to you and say, hey, look, this is what we need to do to ensure it stays like this throughout its whole lifespan. It gets lost down the line. But once again, if there was legislation that said every 12 months, a landlord is to do a bond clean or every 12 months, a tenant is to do a clean when they vacate, in my opinion, mate, it just yeah. takes the grey lines out of small things that, that cause sure. a headache. For sure, for sure. I think, though, you know, a lot of education is as well important, um, you know, with landlords. You know, in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's my property and it's my investment and it's, and it's you know, if I take care of it, it's going to take care of me. 100%. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to – I would be happy to do the clean. Um, even if the tenant's done a clean before the new tenant's coming in, I would want to be doing a clean, anyway, a professional clean to, you know, be presentable for the next person. Uh, but I guess that's education regarding the landlord's understanding that this is an asset that needs, it's a business and it it's needs business. to be taken care of. Mate, yeah. and you know what? And it kind of goes back to how we started. Maintenance is like you owning your own business and your printer breaks or you need paper or, or a new computer it's an expense that will generate you money without my printer. Like, mate, I'll never understand how. I guess when you start, you always have to start somewhere. And I remember I had this, like, printer that it wasn't the commercial-grade printer I have today where it would take me literally 35 minutes to scan 60 pages. Oh, that's the uh, printer. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it, man, I promise. But it's, <laughs> it, it's like... It's an investment that you have to do. So when a landlord needs to spend money, some of them view it as, oh, God, what does a tenant want now? But it's like, no, it's not about that, man. It, this is your business. If you don't spend money on it, it's not going to make you money. And then yeah. they complain when they go try and sell it, but it's not worth what they wanted. But it's like, how can something be worth if you don't invest back into it? Yeah, for sure. And that, you know, that comes down to sort of the buying in the buying process, you know, making sure the asset selection is correct. Um, awesome. you know, if you just buy in anything and because the oil properties go up, you know, that theory, um, you, you're going to get stung for sure. Um, I'll move the conversation a little bit to, you know, when, when we're looking for property managers for customers and, and when I was looking for a property manager for my personal properties up, up north, and uh, when I found you and had a chat with you, I yeah. may have a list of questions, I guess, an interview question, uh, interview checklist that I asked. Property managers, uh, because you essentially you will be taking care of my my most expensive uh, asset that I'll probably ever. Own. So I want to shift the conversation to what should people be asking potential property managers when they get to uh, a point of okay, now we need a property manager. I've got a list, but you being the property manager and being the expert, what would you ask another property manager to know if they're a good fit for you? 
Of course. Of course. No, look, I've got to be honest with you, with with yourself. The one that for me and and I'll probably say Ryan is. And this isn't a generalization of the industry. There's a lot of fantastic property managers out there, like they genuinely, genuinely are, whether they're from small family-run companies to bigger corporate companies, they really are. Sorry about the noise on, on the boat. Um, but having a property manager that actually owns their own personal properties, I think to me can be quite important because they then understand the frustration of having rent paid late, damage, tenants not doing the right thing, maintenance, all that sort of stuff. So when and if a tenant starts paying rent late, it's like, shit, I actually understand that feeling because I've had it done to my properties before. Hey, like no one's perfect. Um, you know what I mean? Sometimes tenants do fall into hardship. So I can really empathize and sympathize with the landlord to the feeling that they going through where I'm not just with respect paid a wage, where regardless my wage is going to get paid, whether or not a tenant has broken a property, paid rent on time or anything like that. So for me, that is something that if I had to go try on a property manager, I would really kind of ask that question is, have they owned their own property? Had do they have their own investment properties and that sort of stuff? Because to me that would be important. Another one where where I would probably hone in on is is their process on handling disputes and yeah. like handling conflict, handling dispute. Because like I say, mate, rent arrears, all that sort of stuff is simple. Technology these days are, is so generated and so automatically processed. Where when I say I don't chase up arrears, I do. But the systems that you chase it up for me, you know what I mean? So the only time I really have to make a call to a tenant is when it gets to about five days late because the system will hound them until they pay. But unfortunately, you can't teach a system, well, not yet, in my opinion, on how to handle dispute, how to handle conflict. Have you been to QCAT? How did that go? Did you win? What was the situation there? Because property management truly is about just managing expectations and relationships. If you can do that in sync and you can do that accordingly, there should be no real issue within that relationship. Leasing property as well, mate. If you get good pictures and you have a good quality home and it's priced correctly, you're going to find a tenant. It's not hard. You just need someone to show up to that open home and answer the questions. You yeah. know, what I mean? so management itself isn't such a hard role. It's just about being able to to manage the expectations of either party to ensure that the whole transaction and the whole sort of working relationship is is correct. So if that answers that question, mate, obviously how many properties does that property manager manage? Um, I've seen a lot of property managers and even in the groups that, that I belong to, uh, what they're saying is they kind of overworked and underpaid and they swamped and they don't have enough support. So for what Ryan and I try to create, look, I pay my team exceptionally well, probably above the industry average, but for, well, my opinion, well above the industry average, but for what I wanted to create, I would rather, when I say take a hit, I would rather not make as much money myself, but ensure my team is happy because the thing that breaks a property management company very quickly is a changeover in staff. Because one day you're talking to KM, yeah, the next day you're talking to Jared, but then they leave and then it's Jody and it's Prue. And so much can be lost in translation, especially if like maintenance or something is happening with that particular home. So for myself and Ryan, like obviously we can never control staff, we can never tell them what to do. But for us, we really just wanted to create a workplace where they felt comfortable, it was second home to them. I mean, they spend a lot of time there, so why not, why not make it an enjoyable one? And yeah, just looking after them and showing them that support. Yeah, for sure. For me, mate, those those will probably be the three main things because everything else is a very simple process. Like I say, mate, with technology nowadays, it's very easy. Yeah, there's a definitely you know those questions that you you mentioned are the big ones on on our on my list uh, that we ask property managers, and I think you need to hit the nail on the head because they all come around communication and, and you know the you know the processes and whatnot comes you know how, how can you deal with people and people people skills i guess and one thing i remember when when i was looking for for my property manager for uh queensland you know we interviewed uh, i interviewed a lot i guess a lot of people and then i'm on it you definitely stuck out because i think our conversation went for a while uh it was it was a while back now but 
I of think course. we spoke for like a considerable amount of time and and we didn't necessarily speak about property or property no. management. We just kind of spoke. And I just felt the connection that this guy actually gives us stuff about me. Uh, he actually cares about me as a person and not just my, my business. Uh, whereas everyone else, they answered the questions and, and they had the right answers, but there was no connection. So I just said, okay, well, let's go to, let's go with, with Jared. And, you know, I've had a few customers that have come to me um, that actually already use you and we're looking at you purchasing in other states. And, and this is, this is a huge, I have actually haven't told you this. This is a big compliment. Uh, I appreciate uh, that. That we've been looking at purchasing in other states and the numbers in, in you know, maybe Adelaide or, or Melbourne for their price point probably would actually return a better, uh, give a better return than if we were stuck to Brisbane. But a few people, they've said, you know what, I know the numbers are a little bit better outside Brisbane, but I'd rather just stick to Brisbane because I know Jared's going to take care of it. No, I appreciate and, that, man. That and that's it's and it's true it's honest and you know i can tell you who they were outside the the show but um show that man i like it thank you to them and 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 you know the importance of having a good property manager i mean one of my properties something you mentioned was you know property managers changing over one of my properties for a little bit of time had property managers changing over changing over changing over because where where that property is there wasn't anyone that was just a property manager unfortunately uh so they're all companies uh corporates that had you know sales and whatnot so i had to use one of them and it was frustrating that every time i call it's someone different picking up the phone and i keep changing the name on my phone you know it was it was steve and it was mary even it was this and that and yeah. every time you've got to change they, they've got a different process they've got a different way of talking they've got a different way you know when do they communicate things to me uh whereas you know for example with you i know when you're going to call me about stuff and, and you know when I don't want you to call me about stuff and I just say, just do it. And, you know, having that process, at the end of the day, we want things to be smooth and, and free-flowing. So um, I think you hit the nail on the head with those questions. Appreciate that, man. Look, I, have a mentor. I still have a mentor. I just haven't spoken to him in quite some time. Can't tell a lie. And he always taught me something. He said, people buy people before they buy your service. I think sometimes just going in, and, and hitting them with your service without building that trust, that rapport, mate, look, I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of other companies like me, as well as there's a lot of companies out like obviously yours, but it's you, it's your brand that makes you successful. It's the same as my brand that makes me successful. Um, like, and this is no word of a lie, this happened today. Um, I have a, a client that's looking at buying two properties um, and she got referred to me. And the first thing she asked me was, before I even was able to say like, happy Friday, how was your days, is how much do you charge? And straight away, my natural instinct was, well, look, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be the company for you because if that's what you're after and you're purely driven by money, look, I am, I don't need more properties made. <laughs> I'm quite okay right now. I want to get more, but that actually value us as a company and me as them as a landlord. And if you purely driven by money, and, and fee, I might not be the best company then for you. You know what I mean? I, I want to create family. I want to create friends in this industry. I'm not saying it like, like a corny or cheesy line. A lot of my landlords are my mates. Like I, I enjoy talking to them. No, I don't catch up with them for barbecues and that sort of stuff. But when they do call, I do have to call them. It's not just, hi, Greg, I have a maintenance question. It's how's the family? How's Jane? How are the kids? Like well, you do become part of our little network. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, mate, when someone comes straight out the back saying, what do you charge? And you don't allow me to explain who I am and, and what service we can provide. Look, in all honesty, I really don't need your properties. And I mean that with respect. It's not a sarcastic throwaway line. Yeah, for sure. I'll be able to add value to you. Yeah. And you kind of think. As you mentioned that, actually, you know, because I've got, I've got my list of questions in front of me. Um, the fees question is yeah. right at the bottom. It's almost negligent um, because it doesn't it, it's such a minuscule question to be honest it doesn't really matter if the service is good everything else takes care of itself then happy to pay whatever the fee is obviously if it's a hundred times different than than the industry well, average and why is different. Yeah. You, yeah. you want to understand why but mate sometimes the difference between a good property manager and i don't want to use the word cheap but this is called an inadequate one maybe mm -hmm. 
could be three bucks or two bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. A week, eight dollars yeah. a month. Like it's not a lot of money, but that yeah. can cost you so much in the long run. And and for me, like when when this lady kind of asked me that question, what went through my head was, okay. If you're thinking about fees right now, and look, I'll be honest, the properties that she was buying or is looking to buy, they're not brand new homes. they older homes in Logan. So I know there's going to be maintenance. So it's like if you're driven by money now and, and when maintenance comes, how are you going to react to that? How are you going to, to accommodate your tenants living in, in, an, in, in a home that needs work done to it? So i got to be honest, I didn't even get to my spiel. I just said, yeah. look, <laughs> Well, we'll we'll be the right match, and she was fine with that. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's you know that's a big thing as well. You know, sometimes you, know, you speak to people, and and no matter what the situation or the circumstance, they're going to try and sell their service to you because they they want the business. But when you're at a stage where you could say no and be honest and be like, it's not going to be a fit. That's that's showing the quality of of the business. Oh, and, mate, and, I appreciate that. Yeah, look, I I don't. I love the opportunity to grow. Don't get me wrong, but if I didn't grow by another property this whole year, mate, I would be happy. I'd be stoked. I yeah. love who we have now. I love the tenants that we work with. I love the landlords. It's no stress off my back, mate. I wanted to build. I wanted to build something that I would say was self-sustaining. Like I've seen a lot of companies build these rent rolls that are thousands. But mate, their property managers are stressed. Their directors are stressed. Like it's headache. That's not what I wanted. Like I, I didn't want that. I wanted to build a good, clean portfolio where I know I'd be proud to represent my landlord's homes. I'd be proud to have tenants live inside them. Everything works smoothly then. Yeah, for sure. And I know you know whenever we purchase in in Brisbane, um, or someone has called us to ask for a recommendation, and and we mention you and we tell them your service. Um, Cost isn't even actually asked. They don't ask once you know we describe you know our 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 opinion and our our work with you. Um, you know the, our recent fellow that we sent to you. He didn't ask about cost. I explained what you did and how how I found you, and he's like perfect. And I don't know his conversation with you, but you know when you can see the value, it's obviously cost is oh, mate. relevant. Okay, yeah, man, it's the same thing. And and like, how can I say for the client that I sent back to you a couple of weeks back, he like he came from another buyer's agent, but um, he wasn't really happy with with that service. And um, he actually saw something you put up on Facebook, I think it was, and he asked me if I'd heard of you. And look, I'll I'll never I'll never take from one and give to another. That breaks all amount of trust and respect. But I just answered his question. I said, mate, I work with KM. He's a fantastic buyer's agent. All of his properties are doing well. I didn't even say reach out. That's, yeah. it. That's all I said. And then I think I believe you said he contacted you. Correct, correct. Yeah, he did. So I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Um, that that quote that your mentor uh, has. Yeah. It's yeah. actually I've actually I've actually got that quote written down next to me. Um, and it's actually a Zig Ziglar quote. And it is, if people like you, they will listen to you. If people trust you, they'll do business with you. Of course. And it's just, I just found it funny that you mentioned it. And I just actually wrote that quote down yesterday um, on my little notepad. And, and 100% true, you know, it's, I think that's the biggest thing with property managers. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but trust is so important because I'm not there seeing my properties on a daily or a monthly or, or even yearly you know some of those ones some of my ones i've never even seen before <laughs> but, right, mate, but i have trust in the, yeah but yeah. i've got trust in the property manager in, in yourself or whoever it is that will take care of it and if you don't have that trust that won't work so i think that's the most important thing and you know okay man that's that's the honest truth mate because i know i'm not the only youngster out there trying to make something happen there's other companies out there like me but they may have their own unique selling proposition i've got mine you know what i mean so why do i need to compete and that's why people sometimes ask me about like oh what about your competition mate you know what the truth of the matter is there's enough out there for everyone i don't really believe in sort of competition i have to be honest with you i'm just sticking my lane i'm gonna do what i'm doing i'll win some i'll lose some the ones that i lose I'll shake their hand and, and I'll hopefully speak to them soon again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't have to backstab. I don't have to 
watch my stuff at night that's i've done something wrong to someone i just do me yeah that's right and you know you so you mentioned um i think you said 420 yeah correct properties on the rent roll at the moment i think when i spoke to you a couple of years back it was in the three it started with a three that number it's, so that, it's started, look i think when you first came on board that was about what 14 months ago 15 months i think we were a bit longer than that now a bit more yeah bit more i think we were actually high twos oh yeah we started we started from from scratch that's yeah that's what i was going to get to is yeah. you know starting from scratch. zero and up to 420 and just a small yeah. you know family run uh business is is very impressive and you don't get to those numbers that quick if you're not good or if no. you're not you know if you're not taking care of your your customers and i'm sure a lot of your work is is referrals uh, mate everything is if you go to my and we talk about this outside of property we talk about social media all the time and i'm yeah. always explaining to you like i suck at it and i don't know how to do it and i wouldn't have a clue how to even get this podcast together <laughs> like I, that's just not me and then sometimes i'm like oh should i do it should i do it and you know what man i'm just going to stick to me and me is building relationships me is taking people yeah. out for coffee and lunches because if you can build a relationship with someone that will just be something that will just keep on coming. You know what I mean? I don't have to, I don't say spend like me speak. What people spend on Facebook marketing is me taking someone out for lunch. Yeah. For me, that's a lot more effective. Yeah, so you mentioned lunches. Um, you haven't taken me out for a lunch. You've never uh, come to Christmas. <laughs> you said it, mate. You've got properties that you've never seen, which means you've never seen me. It feels like, and I came to Sydney not that long ago and you left me high and dry at a restaurant. That's I, <laughs> <laughs> I left yeah so jared was in sydney and we organized to meet up and he was at the restaurant and i just decided i didn't want to see him so i didn't go that's that's the true up. story <laughs> i even ordered a drink and the ice melted <laughs> <laughs> soon mate soon um that's pretty much all my questions i, I don't know if you had any um no. any tips or tricks uh, something else that you want to mention to anyone listening regarding the industry yeah. oh mate look when i say it, not so much regarding the industry it's about more about like i see a lot of people procrastinate and they tend to watch and they tend to kind of dip their toe in but don't really have the faith or the trust to go in and and actually do it and um uh, my mom actually taught me this quote and uh the imperfect action is better than the perfect action never taken. And I think sometimes doing something, even if in your mind, you know, it's not 100% correct. It's better than just sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. You know what I mean? Because I guarantee you, if you just sit there doing nothing, you're not going to get anything. You know what I mean? A smooth sailor never made, I mean, a smooth sea never made a, a skilled sailor. So it's like, you got to just do something. And, and whether that be property, or, or something else, because I know property is not for everyone. It truthfully isn't. The same way as shares may not be for me, and it may be for some. If you kind of want something more out of your life, and, and you want to, to get something that maybe your job can't give within the hours that you work, you're going to have to do something. That's yeah. just a life. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a very good quote. I just wrote it down as you were speaking. Um, similar to the uh, Wayne Gretzky, uh, you miss 100% shots that you don't take. Correct. Uh, if you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> like, it's like the people that get angry when they don't win the lotto. It's like, do you take a ticket? No. Yeah, well, my mum, right, whenever there's a huge lotto, lotto uh, winning prize uh, up for grabs, and she starts thinking, oh, what would I do? Imagine if I won... I'll give this to much to charity and whatnot. And then, you know, she's off dreaming and we say, you know, have you ever bought a lot of tickets? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, how, how are you going to win? How are you going to win? How are you going to win? You're going to win. You got to you buy know. a ticket to win the raffle. I'm in 10%. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Look, I think no real tips, man. Um, a buyer's agent, like you asked me, a property manager, it's if you're sick, you go to the GP. You want to get the professional advice. You want to get the opinion of, of people that know their craft, that are in that industry. Yeah. Same as a buyer's agent. Yeah, man, you can do it yourself, but there's a lot of properties out there. And I'm not bagging real estate agents. They work for the seller. They don't work yep. for the buyer. And that's just the honest truth. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we definitely don't uh, We don't think anything wrongly or badly of real estate agents. Their job, like you said, hey, their job, job is they, to sell. 
they do fantastic. And I know one day when I sell my dream home, I sell my own personal home, I want the agent to get the best value for me. And mate, they do a fantastic, fantastic job. But they're not there to protect the purchaser. They're there to enhance the sale for the seller. Yeah, for and sure. The agents do exactly that, mate. They they will do the best for the purchaser. And yeah, I think yeah. There's a lot of wrong property out there. And like I said, if it purchased incorrectly, can it can hurt. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know, you said it perfectly. <clears throat> the wrong the wrong property will cost you more than you ever make. And there's a lot of properties out there and there's a lot of suburbs and there's a lot of locations and Australia's a huge market. Um, so we, we, we're of the opinion that you've got to surround yourself with the right team. You know, your financial planner, okay. accountant, property manager, buyer's agent, even real estate agent when you're selling, you know, it's all part of your team. Um, like you said, you know, if I'm sick, going to a doctor, my car breaks down, I'm calling a mechanic. Um, so when you buy a property, get a property manager. Um, in saying that, if people have purchased property in Brisbane, or they just want to contact you for whatever reason, say hello, whatever. How can they find you in your business? What's the best way? Mike, that's a very good question because, yeah, I don't really do social media much. So the website probably is the best place to go. It's www.efficientps.com.au. It is spelled a bit differently. It's spelled like my surname, Fisher. So it's efficientps.com.au. Um, there's a call page there. My numbers are on there. There's the 1300 number. That comes straight through to myself. Like I say, mate, my Instagram, Facebook page, I just really <laughs> haven't kept up with the times and I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's cool. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we'll put all your details in the show notes. Uh, so if anyone is looking to contact Jared and switch over to him as a property manager, just wants to have a chat, whatever it is, um, I will, your, the details will be in the show notes so you can get in contact. Thank you, Jared. It's been a long time coming. It has actually been a pleasure, my friend. This is I appreciate the best it. Best Friday afternoon spent in a long time. Uh, Friday afternoon working, so I appreciate it. <laughs> absolute, absolute pleasure chatting, and and I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and share what we've done and what we do. But um, yeah, keep up the great work, mate, because you definitely make my life a lot easier. To be fair, honest with you, and uh, I think you make the landlords' lives easier as well. Oh, too kind, and. Uh, one day uh, in the in the near future, we'll upgrade you to the other one, to the business world <laughs> podcast. <laughs> We're just a I, little look, joke there. Um, I can't but, come after Alex Latouche, mate. That will be embarrassing. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'll let him know you said that. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening in. Um, if you, you can find the show notes um, where the show notes belong. <laughs> and you can find, find uh, this episode on iTunes, Spotify, all the podcast players. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, all the things that Jared is not on, we're on. I was going to say, mate, <laughs> well, I could probably find you on one of those things. I think I've got iTunes. Uh, yeah. we're well, also, also, we're on Clubhouse now. So uh, you can go on Clubhouse, type my name and find us, and we can have a chat. Um, Jared doesn't even know what Clubhouse is. We'll have a chat later. I have not a clue. You just kind of make me feel very insipid when it comes to social media. Man, I better get my stuff together, huh? <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Uh, thank you all for listening. and. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Jared. You're welcome. Until next time. Appreciate you having me, mate. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Wonderful. afternoon. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Ciao, bud. Thanks, buddy.